Hey everybody, Chris Thunderlaser, and in this video we're going to cover setting up and calibrating your Thunderbolt camera. Now, there's going to be a couple things you're going to need. We're going to need our USB thumb drive that was provided with the system when you got it. You're going to need a board of some sort, either cardboard or something so that we can run this test that runs through these patterns for calibration. Um, something preferably that will pretty much cover the entire bed. And you're going to need your USB cable, regardless of the way that you're connecting the machine, whether it's network, uh, ethernet cable, or USB. Um, the camera signal and information travels through the USB. So if you're using USB already, you're not going to need any other connections. It's already connected. But if you are using Ethernet, you will have to run a secondary cable to your computer so that the computer does get the information uh, from the camera. That said, let's go over to Lightburn and we'll go through how to load the file off of the USB and also how to run the calibration file. Before we head over to the computer, I just wanted to make mention that there is a dust cover that is on the camera. So you're gonna wanna pull that off as well as you may want to prepare and have some type of printed sheet down here or even an eye chart because uh, we can focus this camera by turning the lens to the right and left counterclockwise and clockwise. And we want to be in focus. We want to have the clearest picture possible. So this is going to be something that you'll probably want to do um, prior to running the end calibration. As soon as we have a live image, then you can adjust that. Okay, so once we're in Lightburn, uh, this is where we're going to access our camera control. And if the window is not up, like this top window in the right-hand corner, the camera control window, if that's not up, you will go into, actually, let me, I'll get rid of it. We'll go into window and click on camera control and it should pull it right up. And it may be um, as a tab in one of these uh, windows like this. And now you can see that it's in my cuts window. Now the next thing you're going to have to do is we need to make sure that our camera is plugged in via USB and then we also need our USB thumb drive because we're going to access the calibration um, file from our folder. So right click on this camera window and then we can import camera settings. So I click that and I'm going to find my Thunder thumb drive. And I'm going to look for the calibration file for camera. Expand that folder, click on the camera calibration, the LBCM, and then click open. At that point, we are going to be able to go through and select our camera. Now we have a couple visible here, but it should be the KS5A2361. Um, yours should be similar to that, if not identical. So let's click on that one. And now we can see uh, part of the bolt is upside down because it is, the lid is up. And at this point, we're going to have to run the calibration and we're going to have to close the lid. Now, a huge important factor when we're doing this calibration test, need to autofocus. The camera is taking a picture from above and it's, it's trying to calculate pixels uh, for positioning reasons. So we need to make sure that it is closed and that it is uh, in focus using the autofocus um, button on the machine. So let's get that done real quick. So as you can see, I have a piece of cardboard in here and um, it covers almost the entire bed. What we're gonna have to do now is just go through and click on the autofocus button. Focus. Yes, you are okay. And again, this is very important because we want the camera to see the same distance to our material all the time. This way it's accurate. Once this is done, once you have the, um, the material autofocused and covering a good portion of your bed, then you can close your lid and we can go back and do our calibration. So 
So once we have everything plugged in, we have our cardboard or, or whatever material you're going to use for the calibration test, and you have it auto-focused, uh, we can now go up to Laser Tools and do a camera or a calibrate camera alignment. And what we're going to do is just go through this menu process. Um, it is an overhead camera. It is not a head-mounted camera. We are going to select our camera which is the KS uh, 5A2361. Click Next. And at this point, we're going to input the settings for fill speed and line. And we're going to only be scoring and engraving enough that we can see the results so that we can pick the center points of each one of these circles, one through four. The material thickness doesn't matter, we're going off of the top of the material. Fill speed, a typical engraving speed, I'm just going to go 400 with a fill power of 30. Line speed, typical score speed, anywhere from about 80 to uh, you know, 150 or so. Um, I'm going to do 80, oops. And speed or power for my score, let's do 20% scale. We're trying to max this out, um, but not exceed any of the movements or area for the, um, for the head to move within our bed area. So scale, Lightburn's uh, intelligently trying to figure out what the proper scale is. I'm going to go up to 140, and once we hit the frame button, the camera wizard will set out the, the pattern. And then at this point, we can frame it on the machine to make sure that it does fit. But it looks like it's going to fit just fine. And then we can go and click Start. And we'll go look at the machine and see exactly how this test is going to be run. So everything looks good. The test looks good. I'm going to click Start. All right, you can see it's going through the process. Again, we are literally just trying to get it to the point where on the camera we're going to be able to see the centers of these, um, these patterns and we're going to be selecting that. Once the test is finished running on the laser, then we're going to come back in here and go into our camera alignment wizard again. We're going to click next. It is a great idea to either right after the, uh, the test is done engraving that you move to the back left corner or you can just come in here and click uh, this way the, the gantry and the head assembly are all out of the way so that we can see exactly where we need to click in the center of these graphics. So I can see clearly the, uh, the bed of the machine. Uh, the laser head is back in the left hand corner and I'm going to capture this image. And then I'm going to click next. And at this point they want you to, I mean, really just follow the directions. They want you to click one through four, and what we're going to do is zoom in, and we're going to find that center point, and we're going to double click it, and then you'll get a crosshairs wherever you click it. Zoom out, and then zoom into number two, and so on and so forth. Zoom into number three, and do your best to get in the dead center of these. And if you don't, then you can undo to the last one. And you can just drag it over, double click. OK. And that's pretty centered. I mean, that, that's uh, as good as we're going to get. Now I click Next. And that's it. Now that I have it calibrated, I can update the overlay. And I can see that my live feed is now transposed or updated, the, the overlay is now visible on the screen or on your artboard. And what I like to do to test the, the accuracy, because um, there are some adjustments over here with the width, height, and the X and Y shift, and you can adjust this accordingly. But I like to go into the center here, uh, knowing that, you know, with optics and cameras and stuff like that, that as we go out to the sides, we do lose, lose a little bit of accuracy. So I like to test in the center where I would be aligning something and then going outward. So I zoom in here and I want to make a quick score where this box is getting 
engraved or sorry scored where it's touching the inside of this circle. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to go to my cuts layers. I have an 80 with 20% power and I'm going to send it to the machine. I'm going to start it real quick. Let me go to my camera control. And what we're looking for is that it's accurate. So once it does the score and comes back, and then we can update our overlay again. And don't mind the part that got cut out, but we can see that our square is perfect. Um, I had already done my, my shift X and Y, and you can see those are very, very minimal adjustments. Um, but you're just fine tuning it. But now um, it's ready to use. Now that it's ready to use, we can start putting products down there and dr uh, dropping our graphics on top and then engraving. And let's show you how that works. All right, now we can test the usability and functionality of the camera system. I'm taking a slate coaster and I'm just gonna set it in there. It doesn't really matter how it's placed. Um, I do, however, wanna make sure that I do get it auto-focused in because that's going to maintain the accuracy of our camera system. That's how we did our calibration and that's how we have to use it. Okay, so now that I have it in there, I'm gonna close my lid and we'll pick back up on the computer. Once you have your material placed, uh, you'll come back to your camera control window and you're going to update overlay. And we can see, clearly we can see the image of this, the, um, the slate coaster in there. And if you want to, we can kind of do a better live view if you want, or we could have it faded. I like to have it faded a little bit just so I can see my graphic better. And I'm just gonna place this in here like so. And once we have our graphic positioned how we want, then I can go ahead and send it to, and just double check our settings. I'm gonna send it to the laser. And note that it's going to be running in absolute coordinates. Uh, basically that's just saying that now our artboard is a mimic or uh, basically GPS map locations of the actual bed on the machine. So they represent each other. Exactly the same position on the screen should be the position that it engraves or cuts on the machine. All right, that's set. Let's go ahead and engrave that real quick and see how it comes out. All right, and let's see what we got. We have a perfectly functioning camera system now ready to be used to position things and get them cut or engraved correctly. I hope this helped you out and we'll see you on the next video.